Today I'm going to talk about virtue epistemology and the lecture will be divided into four parts. In part one I'm going to talk about what is virtue epistemology, uh, how should we understand uh, this uh, approach in epistemology, and also what are some of its advantages, why might this approach in epistemology be attractive. In part two I'm going to talk about two kinds of intellectual virtue. Uh, on the one hand, uh, there are what virtue epistemologists call character virtues, and on the other hand, there are what we call faculty virtues. And it's important to get straight on this distinction, and, and so I'm going to uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, that in part two. And then in part three, we'll look at how the two kinds of virtue are related. And then finally, in part four, I want to talk about the uh, particular virtue of intellectual humility and how it fits into the broader virtue theoretic framework. Okay, so part one, what is virtue epistemology? Well, epistemologists tend to understand virtue epistemology on an analogy with uh, virtue ethics, on an analogy with virtue ethics. And so it's going to be important to just talk a little bit first about virtue ethics, and then we can talk about virtue epistemology as an analogy to that. So a little bit about uh, virtue ethics. Well, ethics in general is concerned with various sorts of issues. So for example, uh, one main issue in ethics is what actions are right, or what is the nature of right action, what makes uh, for right action. Uh, another kind of question in virtue ethics is what sort of things are valuable or what sort of things are worth having or worthy of pursuit. So, for example, uh, you know, if you ask what are the most valuable things in life, you might say money, uh, you might say having nice things. Some people think it's uh, experience various kinds of pleasure. Or maybe you might think uh, education is valuable, reputation is valuable, maybe you think friends are valuable. So that's another sort of main question in ethics, what sorts of things are valuable. Uh, a third question is what makes for a good life or a desirable life or a life worth living? Um, uh, what does it mean to flourish or thrive uh, as a human being? So that, that's sort of you know, questions about what kind of life should I lead? What does a, a good life look like? And then finally, in ethics, we're concerned about what makes for a good person, or in other words, what makes for a virtuous person. Uh, so what does that consist in? What does that look like? Now, different ethical theories tend to make one of these questions most fundamental. And then once you've got an answer to that fundamental question, whatever you think it is, then you can go on to answer the other questions uh, uh, by referring back to uh, what, you, what, what you think is most fundamental. So, for example, uh, in ethics there are deontological theories, uh, such as uh, Immanuel Kant's uh, theory, which tends to focus on the issue of right action, what makes right action. Uh, only when he's got the answer to that most important question does Kant then go on to talk about what's valuable, what kind of life should I lead, uh, what kind of person should I be or what makes for a good person and these tend to be in terms of which actions are right so for example a good life would be a life full of right action understood in this Kantian way uh, now consequentialist theories such as Mill's utilitarianism they make uh, the question of what's most valuable uh, the fundamental question so uh, you know what what things in life are most valuable and then you can understand something like right action in terms of, well, the right action is the thing that promotes that which is most valuable, or a good life is that which contains many valuable things. So you get uh, the idea that uh, the fundamental question is then on value, and then goes on to answer the other questions here in terms of value. Okay, well that brings us to virtue theory. As you can imagine, uh, virtue theories focus on the question of what makes for a virtuous person. So they're going to make that question about what makes a, 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 a virtuous uh, person. That's going to be the fundamental question. And then we're going to go on to uh, answer questions about right action, a good life, what things are valuable uh, in terms of uh, uh, the answer we give to the virtue question. 
So for example, we could understand a right action as roughly the sort of action that a virtuous person would perform in the circumstances. Or we could uh, understand a good life as uh, a life that um, uh, a virtuous person would lead and which would have the sorts of things that are necessary to lead uh, a virtuous life, things like that. Uh, so what, what we're doing here is we're taking, uh, with these different theories, we're taking different approaches to what you might think of as the direction of explanation. So, uh, you know, some theories uh, think you, you, you make, uh, for example, the notion of right action fundamental, and then you explain other things like what makes for a good person or what makes for a good life in terms of right action. Virtue theory makes the concept of a virtuous person uh, fundamental, and then it attempts to explain other things like right action, a good life, valuable things in terms of uh, a virtuous uh, person. Okay, so that's virtue ethics. So virtue ethics is understood as taking that sort of direction of analysis or direction of explanation uh, in in a way that makes virtues fundamental. So now uh, we can talk analogously about virtue epistemology. So consider various issues that are of concern in epistemology. We might ask what makes a belief justified or reasonable or, or rational to hold. Actually, epistemologists usually want to make a distinction between rationality and reasonableness and justification, but for our purposes, let's say those are roughly uh, you know, in the same ballpark, the same sort of thing. And that's one set of question. And the question is, you know, what what makes a belief a good belief in the terms of being justified or reasonable or rational? But another kind of question would be uh, what, um, what sorts of things are intellectually valuable? So, for example, uh, when we're, what sort of things should we pursue as intellectual uh, beings? So you might say truth. Uh, you might say uh, reasonableness. You might say knowledge. Uh, you might say wisdom. Uh, these are various uh, candidates for epistemic or intellectual goods or values, and uh, we might take that as fundamental. Uh, we could ask what makes for a good intellectual life uh, or what makes for intellectual flourishing, uh, so to speak. What does that look like? Or finally, we could uh, ask what... Uh, uh, what's uh, an intellectually virtuous person look like? What does, uh, what does that consist in? Um, so uh, again, as you can imagine, virtue epistemology is going gonna, is gonna to take that last question about what makes for an intellectually good or virtuous person as fundamental, and then it's going to try to understand uh, intellectual goods, uh, the intellectual properties of belief, uh, these sorts of things, uh, by uh, referring back to our, uh, our answer about what makes for intellectual virtue.